Good day, everyone. This is Azen News to bring you the latest updated news for you. Timor Leste's president asked to part from foreign investor to develop the country. Jose Ramzorta arrives in Singapore in order to meet and discuss with foreign investors regarding the development process in Timor Leste. Jose Ramazorta also had a meeting with the Kuwaiti businessmen, where their main focus of discussion are about infrastructure and various areas. Jose Ramazorta explained the company had invested in some countries, and he guaranteed the future investment of the company in Timor Leste. I'm an investor from Kuwait. Investors from Kuwait, they want to see how they can contribute to finance infrastructure projects in Timor Leste. This group, as a large group, they can finance directly or they can mobilize other investors, including banks, but including banks means loans and explains that the interest on loans lower than 3%. There is no limit to investment because I asked if they financed Greater Sunrise, they said up to 12 billion they can finance it. In addition, the head of state also continues to meet with the Open Society Foundation to ask for assistance on the strategic plan for national development and appropriate mechanisms. As according to Ramazorta, there is a need to update the 2011 development plan following the dynamics at regional and global level. Also, group with an Open Society Foundation. Open Society Foundation. This Open Society Foundation group, Jorge Soro is the owner, American billionaire known in the world, and have already hosted this group once in Delhi and another time gathered in New York and asked for help to evaluate our strategic national development plan because we started the national development plan in 2011, 10 years ago. This plan will end in 2030 to see what has done well and what has failed in this plan. <laughs> The president also urged all entities to work together and concentrate on the national development plan and concentrate on the national development plan which has existed as a way to contribute to the development process in the sovereign nation. The meeting with the investors is the first meeting of Horta while visiting Singapore. Japan and Timor Leste will continue to strengthen cooperation in various fields. The president of Timor Leste, Jose Ramazorto, received a credential letter from the newly appointed Japanese ambassador to Timor Leste, Kimura Tetsuya, at the presidential palace in Dili. Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, Julian da Silva, said Japan and Timor Leste so far have a good bilateral cooperation in various sectors, and both countries continue to strengthen cooperation. Julian added, in the meeting, the head of state Timor Leste recognizes that Japan had supported Timor Leste in several fields so far. E a discussão com o seu excelente senhor presidente da República, o Lia Konawa, o Insa. During the discussion, the president talks about how to continue bilateral cooperation between the two countries. The president also raised some points that existed during the 20 years of cooperation between the Japan and Timor Leste. And president also mentioned about the continued support from the government of Japan for economic and greater sunrise development. Ao mesmo tempo, o senhor excelente presidente da República menciona a Konawa continuação de apoio aussi le gouvernement de Japon n'y a pas de développement économique, le développement de Great Sunrise. La coopération que Timor-Leste a avec le Japon couvre des zones comme les infrastructures. À la même opportunité, Timor-Leste a demandé au Japon d'initier la construction de Comoros International Airport en 2023. Ramazorta a aussi demandé au Japon de continuer à continuer à proposer des scholarships pour les Timorais par la Japon International Cooperation Agency, JICA, et aussi à soutenir l'agriculture et le secteur agricole. And the Japan's private sector or agency can maintain their assistance for the investment and development of greater sunrise. Indonesia's parliament approves criminal code that bans sex outside marriage. Indonesia's parliament approved a criminal code that bans sex outside marriage with a punishment of up to one year in jail part of a raft of legal changes that critics say undermine civil liberties in the world's third largest democracy.
It's not easy for a multicultural and multi-ethnic country to make a criminal law codification that can accommodate all interests. On the other hand, the national criminal material in the criminal code must regulate the balance between public or state and individual interest. Protection of perpetrators and crime victims, actions and minds, legal certainty and justice, written law and customary law, national and universal values, also human rights and human rights obligations. Antara nilai nasional dan nilai universal serta antara hak asasi manusia dan kewajiban asasi manusia. The controversial new laws which apply to Indonesians and foreigners alike also include a ban on insulting the president or state institutions and expressing views counter to state ideology. Legislators hailed the passage of the criminal code that the Southeast Asian nation has been discussing revising since declaring the independence from the Dutch. The approval come even as business group warned it could harm Indonesia's image as a tourism and investment destination. Opponents of the bill have highlighted articles they say are socially regressive, will curb free speech and represent a huge setback in ensuring the retention of democratic freedoms after the fall of authoritarian leader Suharto in 1998. China and Myanmar hold foreign to boost bilateral economic and trade cooperation. Business communities from China and Myanmar conducted in-depth exchanges at a forum in Yangon, Myanmar to boost bilateral economic and trade cooperation. The forum on China-Myanmar economic cooperation with the theme of China's new development and China-Myanmar cooperation attracted over 100 attendants from the two countries who exchanged views on topics including building China-Myanmar community with a shared future, deepening pragmatic cooperation in economy and trade, and jointly building the Belt and Road at a higher level. U Khan Miat, executive member of the UMFCCI, said the forum held today is very important for strengthening the economic cooperation between China and Myanmar. He adds the forum can help boost the import and export trade between us so as to spur the various economic sectors of Myanmar. The regional comprehensive economic partnership came into force between China and Myanmar on May 1st, bringing new opportunities for the pragmatic cooperation between the two countries. Belt and Road cooperation projects between the two countries are also making steady progress. Indonesia evacuates villagers as volcano erupts on island of Java. Authorities said a volcano erupted in Indonesia spewing a cloud of ash 15 km into the sky and forcing the evacuation of nearly 2,000 people as they issued their highest warning for the area in the east of Java Island. Eyewitness video posted showed villagers evacuating with their belongings through ash cover land. Semeru, the tallest mountain on Java, erupted last year, killing more than 15 people and displacing thousands. There were no immediate reports of any casualties from the eruption of the Semeru volcano this year. With 142 volcanoes, Indonesia has the world's larger population living in the close range to volcanoes, with 8.6 million people within 10 kilometers or 6 miles of one. Residents in East Java, Indonesia, on high alert after eruption in Semeru. Thousands of residents in Indonesia's East Java were on high alert after a violent eruption at the island's tallest volcano, Mount Semeru, prompted authorities to impose an 8-kilometer no-go zone and forced evacuations of entire villages. An affected villager urged the government to provide assistance in relocating as soon as possible. Umar Rosidi Seba, the chief of an observation post monitoring Mount Semeru, told Reuters that volcanic activity remained high after the 3,676-meter volcano erupted at 46 minutes past 2 p.m. local time. The eruption, some 640 kilometers or 400 miles east of the capital Jakarta, follows a series of earthquakes in the west of Java, including one last two months, that killed more than 300 people. No casualties have been reported and there has not been any immediate disruption to the air travel.
Thank you. We'll see you soon. Have a great weekdays ahead.